Strike! And the Reds are two outs away from being the champions of baseball. That's 20 in a row. Nine strikeouts for Jose Rijo. batted in Jim Bowden the general manager did a great job of plunking him right in the middle there he is with Jose Rijo so no wonder Jim oh. Bowden's over there smiling how can you not smile when you sit next to Jose it was like a Saturday Night Live before the game with Rijo and Sammy Sosa holding court <laughs> you talk about two effervescent guys who just love to be on a baseball field Jose of course is back with the Reds he's put together the Reds young baseball academy in the Dominican and he said it's come along great he's got a lot of good young prospects down there and he's hopeful of having a spring training game if not next year then the year after down there and he's really no matter how much you talk to him I think Chris there still is the hope that one day he'll wake up the left the right elbow will feel good and he'll be able to pitch again he says there's one more <laughs> comeback left in that elbow and he deserves to end it on his terms. Same old place that you laughed about. Well, the names have all changed since you hung around. But those dreams have remained and they've turned around. Who <laughs> would have thought they'd lead ya? Who'd have thought they'd lead ya? Reception was warm. Welcome gracious. back. And I smile when I think how it must have been. And I know what a scene you were learning in. Was there something that made you come back again? And what could ever lead you? been desperate to find some pitching this season and surprisingly as you just saw they may dip into their storied past for some help. Yeah let's play remember me now. He was the Reds ace when they won it all back in 1990 but a bum elbow cut him down in his prime behind curtain number one Jose Rio and he is on the uh, comeback trail. Today Jose showed up in Cincinnati and pitched for the Reds brass off the mound. Yes sir he did despite having five surgical su procedures on his right elbow including Tommy John surgery Jose th thinks he can make it back to the bigs he pitched three simulated innings today approximately 50 pitches through his entire repertoire fastball slider splitter and change up his fastball topped out at 89 miles per hour and the Reds like what they saw so Jose is set to pitch this coming Wednesday at Class A Dayton to begin the comeback trail. Oh, we'd like to see that and we're going to go one on one, one with Jose tomorrow in his right arm at the age of 36. We had an opportunity to speak to Jose after this three inning simulated game and asked him how he felt back on the mound at Synergy Field. I feel good. I feel real good. Uh, the header let me know. They showed me that. Uh, pitch three innings, 50 pitches, you know, strike out four guy. I guess not bad, you know, major league level. Last time I faced a major league header was in uh, spring training in 1996. 
you know, for somebody that have been pitching six years, <laughs> that's not bad at all. I was pleasantly surprised. His ability to pitch, uh, doesn't have the arm speed that you'd really want at this level. Uh, uh, has really just started, been thrown in his academy. I think he's pitched five games, up to five innings uh, down there. Enough where he requested, hey, let me show you what I got. Uh, showed me three good pitches. Uh, he's got to stage them. It's not the same Jose Rio with the life on the fastball. He's got to stage all his pitches. He's got a terrific changeup. And by the way, Jose Rijo will pitch Wednesday in Dayton for the Dayton Dragons of Class A ball down there. And that was Bob Boone catching as we're joined by medical director Tim Kremchek. I know you wanted to say something about that. Is Bob Boone making a comeback? <laughs> I mean, he looked pretty good behind the plate. <laughs> well, what about Jose Rijo? It's been five years since he last pitched. What, what has his arm done in those five years? Well, Jose had his uh, arm fixed before I came on board, but I've been seeing him now for five years. And I'll tell you what, uh, if, if he can do half of what he could do before he got hurt, he'd be a shot in the arm for the Reds. He's certainly a shot in the arm every time he comes down to the locker room and deals with the players. And it's just fun to have him around. So um, I wish him the best. Uh, I hope he does well, and I'm looking forward to watching him pitch. All right, it's been six seasons since Jose Rijo has pitched in the Major League game Wednesday. He's going to find out if there's any chance of doing so once again. Yes, that outing will come in Dayton. And coming up, Dan Hoare talks to the 1990 World Series MVP to get his thoughts on his final comeback. They go one-on-one. -on -one. You know, Damon, Jose Rio reminds me an awful lot of the Black Knight and the Monty Python the Holy Grail movie. After having his second arm cut off, he responded by referring to his stumps as just a flesh wound. Oh. Yeah, after five elbow surgeries and two failed comebacks, Rio's not done fighting either. Note to self, Rent Monty Python, the 1990 World Series MVP, scheduled to make a start for single A Dayton Wednesday. This after he threw three innings of simulated ball yesterday, in which his fastball clocked out at 89 MPH. Dan Hoare doing what uh, hitters couldn't do in the past, and that is catch up with the former Reds flamethrower. And they're doing it while going one on one. One of the best pitchers in Reds history is on the comeback trail. 36-year-old Jose Rijo will start a minor league game next Wednesday against, or in Dayton, I should say. Why are you making this comeback attempt? I think it's too hard for me to just be watching baseball and see the win begin his play today and see Jose Rijo back in 95, the way he went down uh, without even saying goodbye to the fans and the people that love again and the people that give me their support. I think to me right now, I owe something to the fans, to the people that love again. And I want to say goodbye. I want to be able to prove this. It's never too late. It's never too hard. The, the worst, difficult, or impossible, you don't sit in my vocabulary. Hmm. You have a nasty scar on the inside of your right elbow. Five times you've had surgery on it. How is your elbow? My elbow doing good. I'm doing good right now. Obviously, uh, now and then, uh, after that piece more than 80 pitches, you get a little tight, but no pain, no irritation, thanks God. So that's, that's a bright side, so I'm used to the pain anyway, if you happen to have another one anyway. You've been quoted as saying, from looking at major league hitters today, you think you can get people out even if you never have the stuff that you used to have. Well, absolutely. You know, the, the hitter today is so young, and the veteran player, they get rid of them so quick now because they make so much money, and they can afford to pay them. So, uh, and they have so many teams right now that they can afford to have a, a great 25 player like they used to be before. So now that's when they come in place, and a veteran guy faces so many young players, it's not as hard to get them out that it used to be. You've worked out this arrangement to pitch next Wednesday without a dollar figure being determined. Clearly, this is not about the money. It is not. You know, uh, if Eugene Bowden came to me and John Allen said, you need to pay to pitch in Dayton on Monday, I'd say, how much? And here it is, and let me pitch. Because I love the game so much, and I want to prove people that when you work hard, that you, when you love something like I do, you work harder until you finally find out that you can't no more, or that you will make it. Clearly, this desire keeps burning, even though you've tried to set the game aside. Today, you know, see what I've seen today. It's like motivation is real. You know, you can do it. You know, when you, the way you know how to pitch and the, uh, the way they get it today, you might not be able to be real. And the one in 90, but you can be real, the one in 2001. It's going to be fun to watch. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Reds pitcher again, Jose Rijo. Now back to the studio. You know, Damon, I feel a lot, a lot like Jose. Fox makes me pay the anchor. That's true. Mm -hmm. I, gotta, I owe a lot.
Evening, everyone. The Reds are desperately looking for pitching help. So, so desperate, I guess, that they're willing to go back a decade. Jose Rijo makes his comeback tomorrow night. The 1990 World Series MVP has been through numerous surgeries and won't retire till he gets another chance. It begins, or it ends, tomorrow night in single-A Dayton. I know I got to acknowledge about the game. And for me to see what is out there playing right now, I consider myself good enough or maybe even even more to be able to compete with out there right now. We'll bring it to you live tomorrow. And here's the story of the week. Rio pitches tomorrow night in Dayton. It's been almost six years since he's thrown in a major league game. He's had more reconstructions to his right elbow than Fort Washington Way has had to its on off ramps. But he's been throwing close to 90 miles an hour and Rio told us late today he's ready to roll. All the hard work, all the effort is going to pay off and uh, I'm really looking forward to, and uh, even if it did not go well, you know, at the today, I'm very excited what I uh, accomplished so far. Pitches tomorrow night in Dayton. I've been doing this my whole life, since I'm nine years old that I remember. So I don't have any college degree or high school, but I do have a degree in baseball. So. I've been doing this for my whole life, and I want to keep doing it as long as I can. Since breaking into the major leagues at the age of 19, Jose Rijo has always had a smile on his face. But for the last six years, he's also had a smile on his elbow, a long crescent-shaped scar resulting from his five surgeries. That's kept Rijo out of the big leagues since 1995. But tonight, Jose began another comeback in Dayton. With a sold-out stadium watching and a much younger teammate shooting home video, Jose Rijo pitched in a game that counts for the first time in six years. In three innings, he gave up three hits and one run, hit 88 miles an hour on the stadium radar gun, and struck out the last batter he faced with a vintage Rijo slider. I wasn't really looking for uh, or worried about him, uh, how many uh, strikeouts that I get today, how many hit that I give up. I was more worried about how my arm going to feel and how my arm going to hold on. And I'm very, very happy the way I feel. Fifth third field here in Dayton is a long way from the major leagues and an even longer way from the Dominican Republic. But back on top of a pitcher's mound, Jose Rijo appeared to be right at home. I think uh, two, three, or maybe four more start. And I think I'll be right back in Cincinnati. That's how we feel today. But first things first, Rio expects his next start to be at Class AA Chattanooga. The only thing going to stop me from keep pitching is going to be my elbow. Or uh, Cincinnati said, no, we've seen enough. We don't think we have a chance. But I think what I show up there today, I think I deserve a chance. Dayton, by the way, won tonight's game 10-6. to Evening, everyone. Live from Fifth Third Field in Dayton, Ohio, the home of the Dayton Dragons. About 9,000 people came here to see Jose Rio one of the greatest pitchers in red history he had made a promise that he was not going to leave the field the way he did six years ago with his arm hanging loose he was going to come back jose rio did pitch again this was the cheer that jose rio had dreamed about since he left the mound in san diego six years ago holding an arm that would eventually require five surgeries to me i would never would have been happy if he would have never come back and pitch like I did today. I would never been Jose Rijo, the happiest person that I am today. He admitted to feeling some nervousness, and despite some shaky control, he faced the minimum through two innings, thanks to two double plays. I'm feeling very, very good about this outing today, and uh, I think the, this first step is a big one. In the third, a two-out double scored one, but Jose didn't care. He went three innings, giving up three hits, one run, no walks, and one strikeout with a nasty slider to end it. I was more worried about how my arm would feel and how my arm would hold on. And I'm very, very happy the way I feel. No pain at all? At all. I think uh, two, three, or maybe four more start. I think I'll be right back in Cincinnati. I'd love to see that. I'll tell you what, they would love to see it this afternoon. If, if you're <clears throat> thinking that Jose Rio can help this team, you should be encouraged tonight. I mean, he looked very, for a guy that hasn't pitched in six years, mm. he looked very good. He looked good. Wise man once said it's much better to look good than to feel good. But Rio said tonight he felt great after tossing three innings up in Dayton. 
How big was this tonight for the 1990 World Series MVP? Listen to this. This is bigger than the major for me right now. I compare this really with the 1990 World Series first pitch. I mean, I don't think it's getting any better than that. It was sold out long before word got that Rio was coming to town. Jose allowed only two balls out of the infielder and got a pitcher's best friend here, a double play to end the first. Rio tossed 52 pitches, 34 for strikes. He got out of the first two innings, one, two, three, but gave up this third inning RBI devil to the now legendary Nuke Logan, who had to have his career made with this hit. This is the final battle Rio faced. Watch the bite on this slider. That one pitch has convinced Rio this comeback just might work out. When you threw that last slider, that felt like 1990 all over again? Absolutely, Bruce. There's no doubt about it. That pitch was, uh, feel like a major league pitch and 1990 World Series kind of type of slider. There's no doubt about it. Soon I left that, that pitch go, I was jumping because I knew it was one of the best pitches I threw, and I, it's not the best. You got a name for it? Rio Slider. Rio Slider. Now, you're telling everybody out here, you pitch, you don't care what the money is, this isn't about money, that you do this all over again. Let, let, me, let me pay Cincinnati to let me pitch. They already pay me enough money. I owe Cincinnati, I owe the city a lot. So I don't care about no money. They can have the money. If you have to pay to pitch, I will pay to pitch. You write them a check. You feel that good about this, right? You got that right. Yeah, and this arm feels great. I'm feeling unbelievable. I'm younger just standing here next to you. I, I look at like, you, I feel like I'm about 20 again. I feel like Marvin Marvelous Hoggles. Marvelous. <laughs> And you know what? He got out of the first inning. One, two, three. How many times has that happened down here this season? Evening and a familiar name resurfaces. And uh, one that everybody's happy to see back. We just hope he's okay. If you were looking for any hope on the Reds today, you didn't find it in Cincinnati. You found it up in Dayton. And you didn't find it with the present. You found it with the past. Catherine Nero was in Dayton for the return of Jose Rio. The Dayton Dragons have no trouble selling out fifth third field, but tonight they had a little help. A sellout crowd welcomed Rio back for his first start since 1995. And to them, his performance wasn't as important as his road to get here. He's got a heart. I mean, you know, I mean, the pitching will come, but you have to have the want and the desire to, to pitch. and. You know, he's got that. If anybody can do it, he's got the right, right head on his shoulders. You know, you think of all the things that Jose has accomplished, World Series appearances, All-Star Games, an MVP award, and yet this start in single A Dayton is really one of the most important moments in his baseball career. I don't think he's getting any better than that. Believe me. I can pitch tomorrow in Cincinnati uh, in Center of Field. It won't be the same like I did today. Rio was on a 50 pitch count and threw 21 in the first inning. My first two innings was I was a little nervous, a little scared. I didn't know what to expect out of myself. He allowed three hits and one earned run while facing 11 batters. Rio didn't earn the victory, but what he got was even more important. I think what I showed there today, I think I deserve a chance. With photographer Sean Dunster, Catherine Nero, Channel 9 Sports. Jose Rijo's next step to get back to the bigs comes tomorrow night for Double A Chattanooga. His comeback from elbow surgery started four days ago, giving up one run in three innings for Class A Dayton. Now, following that game, Rijo runs through a gamut of emotions. Feel real, real good. My first two innings was I was a little nervous. A little scared. I don't know what to expect out of myself. I missed some good pitches, but I wasn't pitching. And then in, uh, in the third inning, that I know that I was okay, I started throwing the ball a little bit better, put a little bit more effort to it. And I was, I'm very, very happy with my pitches. And uh, I think uh, this first step is a big one. I wasn't really looking for uh, or worried about how, you know, how many uh, strikeouts that I get today, how many hit that I give up. I was more worried about how my arm going to feel and how my arm going to hold on. And, and I'm very, very happy the way I feel. When you got the type of energy and the type of people behind you, 
It would make it so much easier. I went up there and all of those, I got people that believe in me. And I showed them that I was, they were right. I think I'm a very lucky person. I think uh, this is should be an example for a lot of people in the world. You know, six years without doing anything, five surgery. Uh, maybe 10% of the people thought that I was gonna come back. And God and myself and I'm a hard work proof people wrong. This is not about money. Give me the contract. I don't even care about how much money I'm gonna sign for. Just let me sign and give me the opportunity. If I wanna be in that line or I wanna be in a team, I wanna be able to help uh, Cincinnati. And I also wanna leave, make sure the team in, in 2003, when they break in the new stadium, they have a great team up there for the city of Cincinnati. I think uh, two, three, or maybe four more star. I think I'll be right back in Cincinnati. Love to see you here. Now tonight, we want you to make the call. Do you think Jose Rijo's attempt at a comeback with the Reds will be successful? Yes, sir. 522, Jose Rijo still on the comeback trail. So far, it's been very, very successful. How did he do last night at Double A? Ken Brew is going to have all the details just ahead. Brew. Good morning, everybody. Listen to these numbers. Three innings, one hit, no earned runs. No runs, period. Rio retired the first eight batters he faced last night. The Comeback Express in Mobile, Alabama. Watch this. Whoosh! It was double-A this time, and Rio was solid. 24 strikes and 42 pitches. And Rio said afterward, his arm felt fine. And he's talking now like he may only be days away from standing on that man at its energy field. The result was outstanding, you know. I feel better than I thought that I might be, so I feel like I'm way ahead of the schedule right now. My mom to stay here all my time, uh, but I've seriously died the way I do today, the way I feel. But uh, I guess I got one more start in AAA, and then we'll see what happens. Now. Jose Rio's on the comeback trail, too. Tonight in a AAA star for Louisville in Charlotte, he pitched four innings and allowed two runs on five hits, including four walks and two Ks. Rio threw 75 pitches, 42 for strikes. So where will he pitch next? He says Synergy Field. We'll search for answers on this and other pressing Reds issues tomorrow night on Sports of All Sorts. Throwing in the minors again tonight for AAA Louisville. Not a Good outing by his standards. Two runs in four innings. He walked four batters in those four innings. At Oak Hills tonight, Jose Rijo says he wants to pitch next week for the Reds. But first, the Reds want to see how he pitches against the top minor league talent. Tonight, let's go to Charlotte, North Carolina. Rijo on the mound for Louisville. Four innings tonight, unlike his previous start. Jose runs into a little bit of trouble. Allows two runs on five hits. Four walks, two strikeouts. 75 pitches, 42 strikes, but this veteran knows how to get himself out of a jam. Watch him run the runner down. Rijo says he wants to pitch Thursday against the Braves. Jim Bowden says he needs at least two more AAA starts. First of all, for all the pain the Reds fans have been through this year, they've been a good couple of stories. Unfortunately, though, they have not been with the big league club. Jose Rio continues his comeback, though maybe a little quicker than Jim Bowden would like. I believe we have some video of this if we could take a look at it. Rio pitched last night for AAA Louisville and allowed two runs. There he is on five hits through four innings. Now, this is his first, quote, rehab start, his third rehab start, his first in AAA. And then there's Adam Dunn, who can hit anywhere they put this guy. He smacked a homer in the All-Star Futures game right there and hit two in the AAA All-Star game. But Bowden says you won't see him at Synergy anytime soon. And we were just talking about this a little bit. This is somebody that people keep talking about, actually both of them, Rio and Dunn. But uh, what do you think? Are we going to see either one of them up here anytime? Well, uh, that's a good question. I think if Jose Rijo pitches healthy a few more times out there, at least one, you know he's going to pitch one more time at right. AAA. And if he doesn't go down there and get knocked around too badly, he'll probably be in the big leagues one time or another, I think. But, you know, you have to keep in mind that Adam Dunn is on the 40-man roster. Jose Rijo is not. The Reds have 40-man roster problems in as much as they've got some young guys on there that they signed to contracts last year as an incentive to get them to sign with the Reds. They couldn't give them enough upfront signing right. 
bonus money. Imagine they said, that. all right, we'll make you big leaguers, which means you put you on a 40 man roster. Well, down the road, that begins to bite you a little bit. That's what's happened with the Reds now. So if they move Riho to the major leagues, that means somebody has to get bumped. And if they get bumped, they're subject to be taken by another ball club for a very minimal amount of money. That's what you don't want to have mm -hmm. happen if you've got a lot of youngsters down there. So I think if Rehill pitches good enough, though, the, the, the fan pressure will be there uh, to get this guy who's very much beloved in Cincinnati. He's got a great following, of course. But, you know, I like to see him earn his way. I mm -hmm. hate to see this be just a feel-good session for the Reds. You know, we, you know, the Reds are in such bad straits that they're going to feel good for a start or two by bringing Jose Rijo up. Because if he can only pitch four innings, well, that's what everybody else in the starting rotation is doing, <laughs> is four innings. So, you know, why do that and put more strain on the bullpen? If he can extend himself to five, mm -hmm. six, seven innings down there and look like he's going to pitch, hey, bring him up, let him finish the season up here. I don't think his stint is... In his mind, he just wants one game. I right. think he wants to pitch a few games, maybe finish out the season, and retire on his own terms, not on the, the terms of an injury that sent him out the first time. Well, I hope he does it. If, nothing, if for no other reason, then it is fun to watch. The Reds and Jose Rijo are at odds. And did you happen to catch Jose Rijo's latest outing in his comeback attempt? Let's go back to last night. Rijo on the mound for Louisville and Charlotte. He goes four innings, allows two runs on five hits, four walks with two strikeouts, 75 pitches in all, 42 strikes. General Manager Jim Bowden gave me his take on Rijo's performance. Jose pitched well. You know, he went four innings and, you know, gave up five hits, walked a few guys. Uh, but, you know, it was a good performance for him, and uh, he'll pitch again Thursday in Louisville. So hopefully a lot of Reds fans will come to our game Thursday in the day and drive down to Louisville for the night game. But, uh, you know, he's, he needs a few more starts down there, but he's making progress. What do you hope he accomplishes at the AAA level before you bring him up here? Well, I think he's got to make sure that uh, his elbow is healthy. And uh, number two, we need to make sure he can locate his fastball and that he can put his slider where he wants it because, you know, getting minor league players out is one thing. Getting him out at the big league level is something different. So we don't want him just to come back to the big leagues. We want him to come back here if he can help us and get some hitters out. What do you like about what he's doing right now? Well, I mean, you got to root for Jose Rio. He put a World Series ring on all of our fingers, and he's got great spirit. He's great for our young pitchers. He's a great developer. He's a good influence on them, and he's great in any clubhouse that he's at. So, you know, for him to make a comeback is very positive, and it's a miracle. It's against all odds, but I would never bet against Jose Rio. Now, he says Thursday he'd like to pitch against the Atlanta Braves. Do you blame him? No. I think every young pitcher in the minor leagues wants to pitch in the big leagues, even the veterans. Uh, but the bottom line is that, you know, Jose needs to work a little bit more before he's ready for up here. Now, minutes after talking with Jim Bowden, I found Jose Rijo in the clubhouse, and he told me he's not happy about another outing in the minors. He says he would rather face the Braves here on Thursday, or else. To keep pitching in the minor league is not fun, you know I mean? It's, if you have has something else to prove, it's having healthy. I would do, you know, I would pitch differently. I would do things different, but... If you're going to win some game, then it's a different story. Yeah. But if you improve them healthy, bottom line. So if, if you want you in the minor, you're going to say no? Is that the end of it? Or? I'm thinking about it. i got four days to think about it, see what I want to do. Yeah. So I haven't made my uh, mind yet, so I don't know yet. So you're not happy about it, though? I'm not now. Of course not. You know, I've been here for 20-something days, and I'm, if you haven't proved myself in 21 days, it's, it's, a, it's a shame for me. You know I mean? It's, it's too bad for me, you know. I take it like a man, though. If you're 21 day and four outing, it's not good enough. I ain't have it. You're ready to come now. Obviously not for them. For my mind, I am. Yeah. And I think uh, uh, I'm not in a situation now that I can afford to keep pitching and proving myself over the time. And uh, like I said, the main thing is if you don't, if you don't feel mm -hmm. that I'm ready, I respect that and understand. And that's it. Is 21 days enough? Tonight, you make the call. After three minor league starts, do you think Jose Rijo is ready to pitch in the majors? Yes, call him up now, or no way, Jose. Give us a buzz at 345-1212. Lines are open right now. Cast your vote. We'll have results later in the show. Now, here are the results. After three minor league starts, do you think Jose Rijo is ready to pitch in the majors? 74% want to call him up right now. And only 26% say, no way, Jose. Thanks if you're one of the more than 800 callers phoning us tonight.
Welcome. I'm Dan DeCrow. And I'm Jeff Fisher. There are two guys down in Louisville that Reds fans want to see at Synergy Field right now. Ro Jose Rijo may have to wait a couple more mm -hmm. weeks, but Adam Dunn is now on his way to the big league. Finally. After the game, Bob Boone and Don Gullett hopped on I-71 to go and watch Jose Rijo make his fourth comeback start tonight in Louisville. What does the Reds pitching coach think of the job Jose's done so far? We'll hear from Gully a little later in the show. They were in Louisville tonight to see Jose Rijo pitch, including restaurateur Jeff Ruby. Rijo gave up five hits and four walks in his first AAA start, but was much more stingy tonight as he faced the Durham Bulls. In three innings, Jose gave up just one hit, one walk, and one unearned run. His one strikeout came against the last batter he faced. In all, Rijo threw 40 pitches, helping Louisville win 7-2. As for the future, Jose says he needs at least one more minor league start. I need one more start. There's no doubt about it. I throw, I throw today up there. I feel like I need to go one more start in minor league and get a better feeling at the arm and get yeah, a better feeling at the game that I'm pitching right now and start getting used to it. I can fool anybody here in minor league, which is easy. Can I be able to do it in the major league? It remain to be seen. Good luck to Jose. He's done well in his four minor league start. Big home runs this season. But how soon will Jose Rio join him in Cincinnati? He pitched tonight in Louisville. That's where we start with our George Vogel, who watched Rio pitch firsthand tonight. How did he do, George? Hey, he was okay. He could use a little more speed on his pitches, and I think the Reds are a little concerned about that. But all in all, he showed good command of everything he had. So tonight in Louisville, it was just another stop in his improbable comeback. Jose Rijo in a Riverbats uniform was enough to tell you this wasn't just another minor league game. It was made more important with the Reds brass making the trip to Louisville to see Rijo firsthand. Needs more velocity, uh, but you know he can really pitch. Change speed, the split finger, which is a really a change up and the, the slider was very effective. After a leadoff walk, Rijo retired eight straight batters. The radar gun had his fastball consistently in the low 80s, which might not be enough. Think you'll get that velocity back? Don't know. Don't know. And I won't be able to throw my fastball like a, like a one or a two. I got to get a little bit more confidence when I can throw many times that I want to. After a two-out double in the third, this was ruled an error, allowing an unearned run, the only run off Rijo in three innings. I throw today up there. I feel like I need to go one more start in minor league and get a better feeling at the arm and get yeah, a better feeling of the game that I'm pitching right now and start getting used to it. So the bottom line, three innings pitched, 40 pitches in all, 26 for strikes. So he did have good command. He allowed just the one hit, had one strikeout, one walk. So not bad, but again, before he makes the jump to the Reds, I think he's going to have to show Bob Boone and Jim Bowden a little more velocity on those pitches. Ken? Bowden sent a message to have him throw more fastballs in the third inning. Is that true? Yeah, after the second inning, uh, Bowden was by the dugout. He hollers over to Dave Miley to tell Jose he wanted to see more fastballs in the third inning. <laughs> so Jose did just that. But on the gun that they have here at the stadium, everything was right around 83, 84 miles an hour, and they certainly want to see him get that up a little bit. Okay, George, thanks. Good work. Okay. Bad things out of the Reds these days. Yeah, and some good things maybe from some guys who could be here making the bad things better. In this kind of season, you hang on to any positive you can find. Jim Bowden might have found one tonight, might have found two. There were two reasons for him to have at least one eye on Richmond, Virginia tonight, and one of those reasons was Dennis Reyes. The Reds sent the yelling Reyes to AAA to test out his sore arm, and he pitched okay. Reyes went six innings, eight hits, three runs, and along the way managed seven of these. Whoosh! And Jose Rio pitched. It was another night where the stats looked good, and another night where Jose came up with another one of those nifty fielding plays. But he got taken for a ride. Here, Ramon Castro has a story to tell his grandkids how he took the 1990 World Series MVP deep into the Virginia night. Rio pitched two innings. That was his only hit, and whoosh, he had two of those. Good enough for the majors, good enough for another Triple A start. We shall see. That was his only hit, and whoosh, he had two of those. Good enough for the majors, good enough for another Triple A start. We shall Welcome back. 36-year-old Jose Rijo hasn't pitched in the majors in more than six years, and five surgeries later, 
He's back. The Reds will call up Rijo Friday when they return from their four-game series in St. Louis. The former World Series MVP will pitch out of the bullpen in long relief. And he didn't like the way his last game ended in a red uniform, and he wanted to be able to come back here and thank the red fans and get people out. Uh, but he, he's not coming up here for one outing. I mean, his intent is to make a comeback. It's, it's to perform this year and next year. Whether it's for one day or three years, but uh, he's worked very hard, and uh, we're just thrilled. Rio's comeback is good news for the Reds. You hear the fans going nuts. That's what it sounded like when Riho came into plain view here at Synergy Field as he took the mound before his hometown fans here in Cincinnati. This is his adopted hometown. They love him here. Riho to face the Brewers in the top of the eighth. Milwaukee leading five to one. Here's the pitch to Collier. Swung on, drilled to right, and very deep it is caught by Adam Dunn again. That's the second time tonight. Hernandez about a four step lead at first the pitch swinging a bouncer hit to third Dimitri Young has that to second one and the relay not in time Rio ready and here it is Henry sends one to left it is caught with a diving catch by Brady Clark and Rio works through the eighth here it is Devo soft little fly shallow left going to be caught by Juan Castro. Here it is. Struck him out swinging. Ready again. Here it is. Struck him out swinging. And Rio works out of it. Tipping his hat to the fans again. Yeah, they love it. No runs, a hit, three left, and at the end of eight and one half, 5-1 Brewers. And we want to welcome those viewers in Cincinnati who just saw the Cincinnati Reds and the uh, Synergy Jinx get up and bite them again, this time to the Milwaukee Brewers. Hasn't been good there. Let's get you right back to Synergy for the highlights, or lowlights, depending yeah. which way you look at things. Exactly. Right now, we start things off with the man who is back, Jose Rijo. It's been a long time, six years, but he is back in the bigs. He'll pitch out of the pen at the start, top of the fourth, no score. Jeremy Burnitz hitting it to right. Adam Dunn will, oops, misplay it. Never been down for it. Mark Loretta will score. Burnitz, the three-bagger, and the Brew Crew. They have something cooking. One nothing. Two batters later, Jose Hernandez, the single to left. Jerry Burnitz, no problem scoring. Two zip Brewers, top of the fifth, two outs. Burnitz in the middle of things. This time he is going to not have Adam Dunn misplay it. Adam Dunn has no shot at this one, a rocket in a hurry. And the Brewers on top, 3-0, Damon. And Burnitz has been on a tear. Bottom of the fifth now, man on second for Ken Griffey Jr. Hits it to right, Todd Walker is headed home. Burnitz throw. On time, but Walker is ruled safe. Three to one. Davy Lopes coming out, RV in the call. Look at the replay. Walker's Henry Blanco. Uh, looks like he oh, made the tag. The tough. call stands. Hey, we'll take it. Reds trail now. Just by two. Three to one. Top of the eighth now. Five one. And Jose Rijo in from the pin. Oh, yes. A standing ovation for Jose Rijo, and he deserves it. Hadn't pitched in the big since 95. One on, two out. Henry Blanco gets a hold of that one. But Brady Clark say, Jose, I got your back. Dive and catch. And Jose, he loves it, but uh, he wouldn't love the results. Yep. Here's the scoreboard. Five to one, your final. The Brewers win it. And that is now six in a row as far as losses. The Reds at home at Synergy, 18 and 42. Burnett's the big night, two for four. Griffey, one for two. Lance Davis, who got the start and had pitched well coming in, five and a third, gave up five, all five earned runs. Now the Brewers lack a pharmaceutical prescription for the rest of the league. Take one dose and losing streak just clears up about three hours over the Reds. You know, they took a wrong dose tonight. We head back to uh, Senator Field and check in with the guys with the call. And guys just won. Obviously, forget about Lance Davis. We thought he was going to come in and be the savior, but uh, he didn't have the stuff either. 
Yeah, but the Reds had their opportunities, and that's a big story tonight. The Reds could have converted easily. They lost uh, eight runners they left on base through the first six innings. That was the story. Twice they didn't even get runners to third with runners at second base with less than two outs, and that's a no-no. Get them on, get them over, get them in. Reds couldn't do it tonight. But this is a night, I think, when you add it all up, that Jose Rio was the big story. Uh, Chris and I were both there in 1995 when he walked off the mound in San Diego. We'll never forget that emotion, and Chris, I don't think we'll ever forget the emotion tonight either. Well, it was a sad day back in 95, George. And we both looked at each other and said, we'll never see Jose Rio on a mound again. And boy, I'm glad to say we were both wrong that night because it was wonderful seeing him out there towing the rubber, not only out there pitching, but pitching effectively and striking out two batters back to back when he finally finished out that inning. That was inspiring. I'll tell you what, brought the crowd to his feet, tears to a lot of eyes, and I had goosebumps everywhere. So it was that kind of a night here at Synergy. Even though the Reds did not win, hey, it was one of those nights you forget about the scoreboard, you think all about the emotions. Two innings pitched, two hits, two walks, one of them intentional. And the question is, where does Jose Rigo go, go from here? And really, it, it's not an easy answer. It's something that will unfold day to day, game by game for Bob Boone and Don Gullett. Well, he's a teammate right now. He's in the bullpen. And obviously, the way he threw tonight, I think he threw better tonight than he probably has in any of his rehab starts. He got the fastball up around 90 miles an hour, something that he had not done before. And I think he'll get stronger and stronger. Now, is he a guy you're going to bring in in the ninth inning with the bases loaded? Probably not. Yeah. But he is a guy that, hey, middle relief. The Reds have been looking for effective pitchers all year long. They're also looking for experienced pitchers next year. So they've got a shortage of that out there. And I got to figure that Jose Rio, if he's going to come to spring training with the Reds, is going to figure in their plan somewhere down the road, maybe even as a starter. Jose Rio has told us from the very beginning he wants to be a part of the Reds, not just on the field, but even more than that. You know about his uh, camp, his uh, college down in the Dominican, where he's bringing young players into the major leagues and into professional baseball. So that'll all enter into the picture. But the story here tonight was Jose Rio. And after the game was over, his two innings, two Two hits, two walk performance, and the standing ovation. Dan Horde was there to talk to him. Two innings, two hits allowed, no runs, two strikeouts. A memorable return for Jose Rijo. Jose, your English has grown very good over the years, but this is going to be tough. Put into words what you're experiencing right now. Oh, who cares about the language? It's uh, <laughs> the divine language. Uh, I feel great today. Uh, before I say anything or go any further, I want to thank God for this miracle, uh, for his support, for the uh, love he showed to me. And God bless this country. I feel so great today. I'm so emotional right now that I just want to say that I just want to keep pitching. I want to ask you about a specific confrontation. When you struck out Richie Sexton with the bases loaded, your last pitch that fanned him was a 91-mile-an-hour fastball. There's plenty left in that arm. 92, 92. <laughs> 92, let's get it straight. But it's, I was just getting loose, and it was getting better. Uh, they asked me if I was going to be ready soon. I said, yes, you know, that's part of the program. Like I said, I didn't want to be another pitcher. Uh, I'll be a show. I want to be a part of the team. I want to cooperate with this team. I know we're going to have a great future this year. You know, we're going to have a great player, a great arm. And I'm looking forward to be a part of it. Well, that's interesting. You're saying you're looking forward to keep pitching. Some people wondered if you had the chance to tip your cap to the crowd, that would be it. But that is not it. It's not be it. You know, I, I'm not going to wait six years, the hard work, physically and mentally, to just throw it away on one day. I thought that I just wanted to do that. I did mention it before, but uh, the adrenaline, you know, my body, uh, my mind, guys telling me that I got enough left on my body on my arm to keep doing what I was doing before. The crowd went nuts when you came into the game, and then especially after you completed your second scoreless inning, that had to be a wonderful feeling. That's Cincinnati fan for you right there. They're the best. And Cincinnati fan, don't have any doubt. You're the best in the whole world. Congratulations on a wonderful performance. Look forward to seeing you next one. Thank you very much, and God bless America. That is Jose Rijo. He is back in a big way. Now back to the studio. All right, thank you very much, Dan. Uh, Jose Rijo, put it into words. God bless America, man. This guy, he's a wily veteran, but uh, obviously he's a rookie tonight, just starting all over again. And I think he has a little something to do with our play of the day. Love and life. Play of the day is brought to you by Shell. Uh, let's relive the moment all over again. Top of the eighth. Jose comes in for the first time as a Red since 1995. Fan showing him some love. Second, later in the inning, Brady Clark helps him out. Henry Blanco, Rob in the left, and that is our Shell play of the day. More OSR ahead. Back on baseball tonight, the Brewers and the Reds. Bottom one, Ken Riffey Jr. facing Max Suzuki. Ring him up, sit him down. Next man up, John Casey. Suzuki 
Gives up just one earned run and six and a third. Pretty good split there, Mike. Splitter working Jeez. tonight. Top five, Jeremy Burnett's. Lift and separate. Yes, please. I love to watch him swing. As hard as he can swing. He's got three home runs in his last three games. One in each of those. Henry Blanco to left. Brady Clark picking it up. Mike Kubal rounding third. In there, 5-1 Milwaukee. Now it's Griffey Jr. bottom seven. Steps out wide. Jose Rio starting to throw in the pen. Hasn't pitched in the majors since 95. Actually got a Hall of Fame vote this year. Last player to get a Hall of Fame vote and then play in the majors again, Minnie Minoso, in 1976. Top eight, Rio to Brady Clark. As Clark makes a great diving catch, Blanca was the batter. Rio back to work in the ninth. And then he throws it by Richie Sexton up and in. And he throws it by Jose Hernandez. It's a pretty cool story. It is, but the Reds lose 5-1. Burnett's a triple and a home run. Reds have lost six in a row. Riho gives up two hits in two innings. Walks two, strikes out two. And Tim, we're talking about a guy that was the uh, MVP of the World Series back when the Reds shocked the Oakland A's uh, in 1990. This is a guy that uh, has had a pretty good run up until he blew out the elbow in 1995. Yeah, and it's really a shame because he was a very good pitcher when he got hurt, and to sit out five years is a really long time, especially when you're not playing anywhere, minor leagues, Japan, or anything else. You know, since 1990, you know, Warren Cromartie came back after seven years away from the major leagues. Dan Boone did that, but Cromartie had played in Japan, so really to come back from nothing after five years is really remarkable. By the way, the all-time record of time away from the major leagues is 21 years by a guy named Paul Schreiber, who played in the major leagues in 1921, 23, and came back 21 years later, uh, which shows you a lot of strange things happened during World War II. Rio's had five elbow operations. How much ice is on that thing right now? Oh, I'm sure a lot. Just armed to go under the knife for the Reds this year. Justin Atchley had shoulder surgery today. He's going to be ready for spring training. Jose Acevedo kind of hoping he was ready for the Cardinals tonight. He only had two bad innings. The first... Craig Paquette, gone, one zip. Next batter, J.D. Drew, uh, goodbye, two zip. Okay, let's move to the third. Albert Pujols, bases loaded, extra bases. Everyone's coming home, three run double, it is five zip. Six zip for Big Mac with Edmonds aboard, gone. Not Acevedo's night. Eight zip, didn't get fun for the Reds till the sixth. Junior with a man aboard, the conventional way out of the park for his 17th large one, eight two. Jose Rijo had a good sixth. Not a good seven. Jim Edmonds with the fourth Cardinal homer of the night. How about we go for five? Pitcher Mike Matthews with the first of his career. Clark and Dunn would add ninth inning homers, but the Reds lose 11-6. The game wasn't over five minutes when Acevedo was packing his bags and heading to the minors. He has been banished to AAA. Up from AA, Austin Kearns. After five home runs in four AA games, Kearns not only gets called up, he's going to start in left field tomorrow night. Here's a guy who had three That's in one night. For the Lance Berkman has made a career of clubbing the Reds. Top of the first tonight, couple of guys on, and bang! On a two-strike pitch, Berkman takes Acevedo deep. It's a three-run shot. But hang on, here he is in the second. On a two-strike pitch again, there it goes. Look where it goes, over the black monster in center field. That's only happened once before. In the fifth, this time off Jose Rio. That ball, that ball is way out of here. Lance Berkman, three home runs tonight. He's the first to do that this season. This game was over by the time the Reds got their first run. That came here, Ruben Mateo deep. From one Jose to another, Jose Rio made a start in the majors. Last time was July 1995. He's back. But he'll be back in the wind column. Welcome back, folks. Last time Jose Rio made a start was in July of 95. Last time he won a game in the majors was five days earlier. He beat the Cubs that day. How about this Cub lineup? And does that make you shake your head and say, boy, if we kept Luis Gonzalez could be batting in front of Sosa, some pretty good talent there. So Rio is on the mound, being opposed by Juan Cruz. Uh-oh. Austin Kearns. Yard work. Housework. Road work. 4-0 Reds. Later, top two, Wilton Guerrero. A two out and a man on second. Corey Patterson. Whoa! That's got to be one of the toughest catches we've seen this year. That may be a gem. All right, Rio, clearly the story of the game going in. Would it be the story of the game coming out, Harold? 
You know what? He had great stuff until he got a little bit tired. But until then, he did a great job. And he, when you got you're around the plate, you're going to get good defense behind you. And that was really the difference with Jose Rio. He didn't blow anybody away, per se, but he just had great stuff, and the defense was picking him up. 4-1. Sosa flies out to center to end the inning. Five innings, three hits, and a K. No earned runs. The line of the Shields. To second, there's your final out. 5-3 res, and Jose Rio gets the win. Congratulations, man. That's an incredible story. Come back and pitch, he said. That's special. And it certainly was. 5-3, the final score in this one. You see that Kearns provided the offense, and Jose Rio doesn't give up an earned run. We'll see if he sticks and how long this happy story continues. Jose Rio takes the mound against the Cubs for his first Major League start since July 18, 1995 and gets his first win in seven years with help from a first by Austin Kearns. Let's go to Wrigley Field. Fans come all bundled up today. Just 40 degrees, 16 mile per hour winds. This is baseball weather. In the first, Adam Dunn gets it started off uh, Juan Cruz. Two run triple down the right field line. Wilton Guerrero, Juan Encarnacion score. Later, Dunn scores on a sack fly. Reds again today lead three to nothing in the first. Rio just outstanding. Five innings, only three hits, strikes out Sosa there. In the second, Kearns gets hold of one of, for his first big league home run, a shot to left field. Reds up four to nothing. Cubbies get one back in the fourth. Guerrero's air here allows Sammy Sosa to come home, and that makes it four to one. More problems for Guerrero. Watch here as he collides with Adam Dunn. Ow! Dunn makes the catch. Wilton leaves the game. Got the win knocked out of him. Curds gets an insurance run in the ninth. Reggie Taylor with the ground in the second. Austin beats the throw home. Bottom nine, Kern shows he isn't invincible. Tough time fielding the ground ball. Watch here. Whoa, uh, uh, it's a little slippery out there, Austin. That allows a run to score. Danny Graves closes out the game for a sixth save of the year. The Reds do take two of three. Five to three, your final score, Reds. Ran, but was his performance enough to keep the Reds win? Welcome to the show. Should we start clearing our decks for October? You think? That might be a tad premature, but the Reds are certainly looking like a playoff team right now. I'm Dan Hort alongside my man Horty, coming to you after enjoying the Jose Rijo show today. And that's where we start the show tonight. Aside from the rain, what a day to be at the ballpark. The club's setting in the first place, going for a seventh straight win. And Jose Rio making his second start after an absence of nearly seven years. As for the county gendarmes, keeping an ever-watchful eye on the great American <laughs> porta potties. In the first, Barry Bonds versus Rio and proper respect from both parties. The outcome? Yeah. A simple fly ball to close the first. Much more on Rio in a moment. He did get an awful lot of nice help including from Aaron Boone. Staked Rio to a one nothing lead in the first with a single up the middle. And there was much more to come in the continual drizzle. Corky Miller in the second with a mammoth rip to left. Oh yeah, two run job, three nothing Reds. Then in the third, the Reds get fat. P-H-A-T, Adam Dunn, kabong. Mm. Two run rip, his second homer of the season. Five nothing Reds. Two hitters later, Dusty Baker looking on, Austin Kearns with a shot to straightaway center, Shinjo after it, Shinjo no go, drops it. That's a double seven zip reds. Then Corky Miller back for more. What do we got coming? Watch him. Rip into the gap, two bagger. Scores another run, eight nothing at that point. And with Rio and the rain, Eight, Dan, is enough. The Reds win their seventh straight, eight for the final. It was really sloppy out there for a while, and the rain coming down, bats wet, your gloves are wet, and and I, I think it has something to do with uh, the starter not being able to get a grip on a, on a breaking ball. I mean, he, he might have thrown two or three, but he's relying on his fastball and his changeup, and a lot of times when, when the rain's there, you don't get the movement that you usually have, and I think that was probably what happened. These are a lot better than those one nothing, you know, scratchers in the in the bottom of the ninth, but, uh, you know, this team is finding little ways to win, and it's always someone different, you know, every night stepping up, and, and you know, it's, it's a fun team to play for. You get a sense in, in here that guys want to do well for each other and guys generally pulling for each other, and that's, that's important. Now here's a look at the Central after today's games. The Reds have a one-game lead on Pittsburgh. Pirates are rained out tonight. The cards are three and a half back, and the Brew Crew is in the cellar. So, on a dreary old rainy day, and the temperature's hovering around 50 degrees, 
22,616 people came out to watch the Reds today. Sure, Barry Bonds was in town with the Giants. It was Jose Rijo they came to see, and Rijo who warmed their hearts. His reception was warm and gracious, and the feelings were mutual. That feel, made me feel great, you know I mean? I wish I don't have to pitch in a row. I wish I pitch every home game. <laughs> That's how good about pitching here in front of my home crowd, in front of Cincinnati people. You know, they make me feel like a king. They spoil me, they make me feel special. In his second start since July 18th, 1995, Riho clicked through the giant lineup, retiring the first 11 hitters he faced, taking a no-hitter into the fifth, and enjoying every moment of this miraculous reprieve. I feel great, man. I feel awesome, you know. I was supposed to be in Dominican teaching my kid in my academy and working with the prospect for Cincinnati and today I'm here pitching with Cincinnati in, in first place. You know, my emotions are too high right now. I feel like an airplane. Along with the fans, others are enjoying Rio's ride and his success. It's amazing. It's amazing to watch him watch him work and see him have fun out there and uh, it's fun to play behind. When you hear the fans you know, cheer for him like that, that fires everyone up. And, uh, you know, he is more deserving than anybody. So, uh, you know, we're, we're riding along cheering with him. Riho has started twice and won two games, and he has done more. He's brought an ease and a confidence back to the clubhouse, and he believes that is part of his task. I mean, I owe Cincinnati everything that I have. Uh, how do I pay it back? This is one of the best ways to do it. But I still feel like I should do more for this organization because they've been damn good to me. Wow. Since returning to the Reds in August of last year, Riho has an ERA of 2.00 in 19 games. Clearly, this is not a fluke. The question is, how the heck is he doing it? Well, it's no mystery when you take a closer look at Jose's way. The majority of Jose Riho's pitches came floating in at less than 80 miles an hour. Hitters waiting to face him had to think, I'm going to kill this guy. Yeah, until you get in there and you're 0 for 4 with, you know, a punch out and a couple of ground balls. You're like, you know, how, what's going on? But the guy knows how to pitch. And it's pitch, you know, it's people like that, like, like Maddox. I mean, the guy don't overpower you, but he, you know, he's going to, he's just going to pitch you, pitch you to death. And that's what, you know, that's what Jose does. The formula begins with strike one. Rijo threw his first pitch for a strike to 17 of the 24 batters he faced. Once the Giants were behind in the count, they had to swing. When a hitter's more aggressive, he's easier to trick. And, and the, the object of pitching, the object of catching, is tricking the hitter. Sometimes you trick them with a 98-mile-hour fastball that they can't get to. But uh, that's really the, what the art of pitching is. Jose's fastest pitch was only 87 miles an hour, but not because that's all he's got left. I can throw 93, 94 miles for average I want to. But why throw 95 and yeah. being around the hitter and throw 110 pitches when I can, he can go in 79, throw and slide in football. You know, he goes out there and he doesn't have the stuff that he used to have. He doesn't have the 95, 96 mile hour fastball. The slider's not as sharp, but uh, he just goes out there with his heart, you know, hits his spots, changes speeds on the slider, moves it in and out, up and down. It's, uh, it's pretty fun to watch. Hamilton says he's learning from Riho, and he's a seven-year Major League veteran. Imagine what Jose could do for the Reds' younger guns. Hopefully, those guys watching the game today, our, our guys down in the bullpen, our other starters, will be able to realize that that's basically the way it works. He's like a, a great surgeon out there. He, he, he did some surgery on those guys. And the operation was a success. Now, here's a great stat. In the first four innings of today's game, the only San Francisco batter who saw more than one pitch out of the strike zone was Barry Bonds. Tomorrow, the Reds will try to make it a perfect homestand as they go for their eighth and the rain holds the crowd to a mere 22,000 today. But if you were there to see Jose Rijo make his first home start in seven years, you got a big treat. Let's go to Synergy Field. Jose Rijo no hits the Giants for four and a third. Finishes with a five hitter. Gives up two runs, four strikeouts, six innings for his second win of the season. The Reds bats looking good early. Aaron Boone singles up the middle. Sean Casey scores. The Reds lead it one to nothing in the first. Then in the second, Corky Miller long fly to left field. That's a two-run homer. Reds on top, three zip. Reds add five more runs in the third. Adam Dunn with his own two-run blast to right field. That gives the Reds their first multi-homer game this season and a 5 to nothing lead. Hey, good to see the Reds are talking about leaving Austin Kearns in the lineup, even when Junior returns. Check out his shot to the wall. That's a double and plates Boone for a 6 to nothing lead. And Corky ties his career high with four RBI. 
Watch here as he doubles home Todd Walker. The ball rolls all the way back to the wall. Kearns also scores. Reds lead it eight to nothing at that point. They're cruising. Umpires said, hey, enough of this rain. Before the start of the bottom of the eight, they call it. And the first place Reds have their seventh straight win, eight to four. They never win a real prayer, believe me. When you got miracle, I always looking at the you and he protect you. And I feel protected today. He hears a guy not throwing very hard, but he throws strikes, he hits spots. You know, he throws the ball within the strike zone where he wants to put it, and that's what it's all about. This week we, we have had to sc crawl back and have Danny come in and, and save the game, but, you know, it's finally nice to get ahead a couple runs, to, you know, to start pitching and, and play some defense and, and have a comfortable lead. <laughs> Now, you don't want to miss the Sports Authority tomorrow night. General Manager Jim Bowden will be joining Brad, talking about the Reds' hot week. How hot? They're 15-8. and eight. They got the best record in the National League. Yeah, better than Arizona. That's the Sports Authority tomorrow night, 1135. With Bill. A double in the game and four RBI. Nice game for him. Better game for Riho. The rain did not bother this guy one bit. He goes six strong innings, allowing just two runs, four strikeouts. Yes, Jose does it again. So do the Reds. The rain ends this yeah, one in the eighth. The Reds take it eight to four, their seventh win in a row. Well, but as far as Riho was concerned, it was all sunshine. He was touched by this day. To do my 10 again in front of my home crowd, this could have been the best thing that happened to Riho and all this 10 that I had on, you know, in my comeback. To be home here and have them stand, give me stand innovation, even when I'm warming up, it's a great feeling. I don't think nobody should feel lucky as me right now. He really had his, his goal focused on getting back to the big leagues and do whatever he could to get back there. And, and now he's here and he's comfortable again and, and he, he trusts the stuff and, and he's a guy that can go out there and get outs whenever he's asked to, either in the pen or, you know, a starter. And how about those Reds? They're currently in first place by a full game over Pittsburgh. Tomorrow, the Reds will try to sweep the Giants and stretch that winning streak to eight games. Jimmy Haynes will fire the first pitch at one. Reds head to head, and here is Jose Rijo. What a great story. He's back. How many Tommy John surgeries? Five. Five. Oh, it went two years without throwing a ball. Of course, the rain would come down. Oh, Doppler radar. You know, whatever they tell me, I believe. That could be any. That could be uh, scrambled eggs. I don't know. <laughs> Richard really has struck him out. Again, the rain would fall. Jose Rijo would say, I'm bigger than the rain. Then Juan Encarnacion. Look at Richard Aurelia. Oh, tremendous play. Great range against a man who can run a little bit. Wasn't that a John Fogarty song? I'm bigger than the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Kent struck him out. Bottom of the second. Still a 1 0 ball game. And here's Corky Miller on Ryan Jensen. This is what I was talking about with Corneo coming on. Ryan Jensen fell back to earth, gave up eight earned runs in two and a third. Off to a great start. In fairness to Ryan Jensen, he did sprain his ankle two starts ago. Hasn't been the same since. Your Vittorialba at the plate. Rio got him. Adam Dunn slugging below 400 as of now. Even with this home run, that's not like Adam Dunn. There's the guy we expect to see. Launches one. His second homer of the year. Reds go up 5-0. Here's Barry. Uh, Jose's got to be careful with Barry. He's one for two with a wall. They didn't just go around him, though. Rio facing David Bell. He struck him out. Jose Rio will be 37 next month. He is now 2-0 with an ERA of 1.89. The rain comes down harder. And you are bigger than the rain, Jose, because the rain ends it and you get the win. Eight to four, seven straight wins for the Reds. That's with Adam Dunn struggling and no Ken Griffey Jr. Almost seven years between wins for Jose Rio. Here's how long that was. Seven pitchers won 100 games while Jose was winning no games. Maddox, Randy Johnson, Andy Pettit, Tom Glavin, Roger Clemens, Pedro, and Mike Nicena. Ever heard of him? It's <laughs> amazing. And look, seven straight wins for the Reds. The Reds are now a first place club. Jeff Brantley was the closer for Jose Rio for a few years. You got to be thrilled to see him come back. I mean, not just a pitch, but he's the ace of a division leader right now, Jeff. Well, not, not only to pitch, Brian, but just to come back and be successful. Because when you talk about a competitor and you talk about a starter and you talk about a team leader, Jose Rio's name has got to pop up, especially with guys that I've played with. It was so unbelievable to watch him battle all of these injuries, the five surgeries, and part of his competitive was competitiveness kept him from being able to get back out on the mound but that's also what's brought him back here he's had the five surgeries he didn't pick up a ball for two years he's finally gotten back to throwing he's back pitching and he's pitching well I think that is amazing too and we've talked about this last year pitched fine his ERA always around two last year spring training pitched very well this year comes in in the bullpen pitching very well it becomes a starter it's really not a shock at this point he's probably gonna be in the rotation the rest of the way well he, he said that he's not going to let them take him out of the rotation once he got in and if he keeps pitching this way 
way, they won't be able to, that's for sure. <laughs> Amazed as everybody else is when you see Jose Rijo run out there with basically no ligament in his elbow, and he's now 2-0. Well, Jeff, it's a miracle from God. I mean, Jose Rio is not supposed to be on the mound uh, after all these years, and he is, and he's just a great tribute. He's what the Reds are all about, and hopefully he'll be able to keep... Yes, they might as well go ahead and make it eight today. Time now for a Good Samaritan Hospital injury update with Team Medical Director Dr. Tim Kremchek. Doc, let's start with a medical miracle that is Jose Rio. He did it again yesterday. What's left in that elbow of his? I don't know. Obviously, he had something yesterday. I don't know if it's a Dominican cigar holding that thing together or what. Elmer's glue. At this point, it doesn't matter. It doesn't hurt. Uh, he's throwing well. If you watch some of the San Francisco batters yesterday, I mean, obviously, uh, he had them fooled. Uh, Jose feels good. He looks good. He's happy. He does an awful lot for the clubhouse. And at this point, uh, we're all happy that he's pitching for the Reds. Is he still rehabbing it? Is there anything he has to do to try to prevent it from being hurt again? Well, I don't know if you can prevent it, but uh, Jose's been rehabbing it since day one. I mean, he works still. Two years ago, when he didn't even pick up a baseball, he was still working out in the weight room, working on his forearm, working on his shoulder, keeping himself in condition. Jose has one big workout. Uh, he's, he's something for the rest of the players to look up to, and I think they do. Cincinnati, everybody, along with the crafty left-hander Chris Welch, I'm George Grant. Well, when this year started, we talked about this first month of April for the Cincinnati Reds, how key it would be to get off to a good start, get a team to believe in itself, get the pitching staff to believe in itself, and so far, so good. Well, I think the last thing you said is, uh, is most important. Get the pitching staff to believe in themselves. Don't read the press clippings, pitching staff. You're better than what you think you are. And sure enough, they have shown it. Look at the record overall. Read this from top and then go right to the bottom. The record, 15-8 and eight compared to 14-10 and 10 last year, but the earned run average, a whole run a game different. That's the difference between 2001 and this year, this year's ball club, who are simply getting it done on the pitching man, giving the team a chance to win those close games in which they don't score a lot of runs. Last year, the Reds ended the month of April in first place in the Central Division. They did it largely due to hitting. As you can see, this year they've done it largely due to pitching. Is there a similarity or is there a difference between those two teams? I think there is. Well, I think there's a similarity, and that's that they had a very good bullpen last year. They've got a very good bullpen, of course, this year again. Uh, the other thing, though, this year I think they're getting a little bit better starting pitching, and it's a good mix of starting pitching out there, too. No, they don't have a left-hander in the starting rotation, but they've got Jose Rijo to sandwich in there, and he's the guy that kind of really buys the rest of that pitching staff. I mean, say what you want about his stuff. He gives those other hitters a chance to get themselves out. And that's a good pitching. Hi, hello, and welcome back to Field Level. We visit with uh, the man of the day, the man of the month, the man of the year, Jose Rio. Jose, uh, what a great day yesterday. Uh, last year was big when you marched in from the bullpen for that first appearance, but yesterday was even more special. I did one thing. I think uh, last year, right now, looking back, it's, it's not even compared to right now. Last year was uh, a special time for me in my life, you know, trying to come back from all the surgery. Um, do the thing that I did, but be able to compete at the level we're doing right now and be in first place is just beat everything else. Before we get to yesterday, let's take a step back a little bit. And I mean, we've been together since your days in New York. In fact, Dave Rigetti and I were sitting yesterday, and Rigetti's just shaking his head. He said, I'm so impressed, not by what he's done from a baseball standpoint, but by what he's done as a man, where you've come from as a teenager when you first came up in Oakland and New York. That's one thing that I want to be remembered by. I don't want to be re uh, remembered as Rio, the great pitcher or whatever. I want to be able to be remembered as a different person, as somebody that worked hard, somebody that dedicated his life, you know, to the game, as somebody that do a lot of things, you know, for his uh, country, his hometown, for the name of the game, for the baseball. And that's what, something that people should be working into a little bit more because when you do stuff like that, I think you got a better life, you know. There's no place here that I walk or uh, in Dominican with people that have calling me and telling me how, grow, how, how proud they are and how happy they are for me. And that's what life is all about. Do some beautiful things for, for good cause. Those of us that know you know your outlook on life, how positive it is. But what did you learn about yourself? What did you learn being away from the game for so long with the chance of never getting back? Especially for the uh, baseball player perspective. I learned that a uh, baseball player started living the real life and they retired. That's when you really spend some time with your family, spend some time with your real friend, and uh, nobody looking for you for who you are, for what you're doing. And that's something that I did enjoy that I learned, and that I very, I'm very proud. And I'm not happy that I went through that five-year period without playing ball before I get the knowledge. But I'm glad I did now that it happened, you know, got the thing out of the way, and be able to pitch again. It made me appreciate again, you know, more. 
I know that uh, you're very proud of what you've done at the academy down in the Dominican, too. You, it's a beautiful facility. It is. You know, I'm here, here I was for five years, and I'll be able to pitch again, but I'll be able to teach the game to this young kid, be able to do something for my community, paying back what they did for me. And now that I, I'm pitching again and making it even better, so now that when I go back, I got a better reason to work harder, you know, with those kids, trying to make sure they get the chance they need, make sure they, they get the opportunity, and make sure even better to get their family opportunity to live a better life. When you came here, you came here as a pitcher, yes, but also it's almost like you're you're an assistant pitching coach with Don Gullett and Tom Hume. You spend so much time with the young players, and they're very appreciative of that. That's what you know. That's what the game is all about. It. I think that's the reason why we're in first place. You know, we work together. You know, we got a very happy clubhouse. I've got a very very good relationship with Don Gullett and Hume in the bullpen. So they let me do my little thing because I know all I'm trying to do is just help this ball team to get better, and that's my intention right now. I just hope you know. When I retire, uh, whenever today from today I'm um, 10 year, I'm just being known as a guy that I came back and put a team together and make everybody happy and make everybody hop, uh, laugh and enjoy the game every day. You enjoyed yesterday, I know. Uh, you know, it looked like you might be heading to a five-inning no-hitter when the rain was hitting, but uh, you pitched brilliantly against a very tough Giants team and against a good friend of yours, Barry Bonds. I think I could have thrown the you no know, hitter for five minutes yesterday. I just got so caught up in the emotion that I thought that uh, what I'm doing is impossible. I know I got caught up in between saying to myself, what the heck are you doing? You know, you're not supposed to do this. You know, you're supposed to be this far. You're not supposed to do this well. And uh, doing that thinking, uh, I just lose my concentration a little bit. I ended up paying off with a give up a couple of runs. But I uh, still, you know, I'm just happy to pitch every day. I am happy to get the chance, and I want to be very thankful to Jim Bowden and John Allen to give me the chance, and especially to Baboon, to treat me the way they are. How about uh, Barry yesterday? Uh, it looked like you had struck him out, didn't get credit for the strikeout, but then you finally walked him. But uh, it's been a great battle, the two of you, over the years. It's awesome. You know, we got the guy that's been the best setter since he got to the league. And be able to battle against Barry Bond, it's just it's a winning situation. You know, the guy, you know, he's the best in the league, you know how good he is and how much damage he can do to you. So a lot of people give him too much credit instead of giving credit for himself. You know, I'm not the pitcher that I used to be, but I still believe in my staff and I believe in myself. If I execute my plan, I'm going to get him out no matter who it is. Because I, I'm here now because I'm just a friend of the family. I'm here because I do my job and I do my homework. Ozzy, I know you're taking it day by day, huh? Without a doubt. Every day for me is the last day. I have no tomorrow. I got no future. My future today. And I live in today as hard as I can for as long as I can. We're blessed to have you back with us and best of luck. God bless America. Jose Rijo joining us here on the pregame show as we prepare for, God bless you, as we prepare for, a salud, as we prepare for the final game of this three-game series, the Reds against the San Francisco Giants. Now let's go back to Chris for a look at the Jeep pitching matchup. Oh, here's another one that people laughed at you for a long time on this one. He went nine and a third innings before he got scored on, and I sat behind home plate yesterday. It was masterful. Yeah, great story with Jose Rijo, and of course, the first game in Chicago, five innings, gets the win. Now he goes six innings, only two earned runs, only threw three fastballs in six innings, basically all sliders and fork balls, and as you can see, that slider is real. I've heard some people say, well, Jose Rijo's just tricking them. No, he's not tricking them. His slider and his fork ball have been absolutely unhittable, and that's why Jose Rio right now is 2-0. and How long his elbow can hold up, that's the big question. We just keep praying every night. Can you confirm something for me? Because I saw him on a 3-2 and two count with Barry Bonds. Throw the glove out like, I'm throwing you a fastball, here it comes. Did he actually do that? <laughs> he did. The Barry Bonds was yelling at him, saying, hey, Jose, can you at least throw the speed limit? And Jose looked at him and said, okay, here comes the fastball. And he threw an 87-mile-an-hour fastball. And, he, and Bonds did what with it? <laughs> It's not a pitcher's favorite uh, face to see when he steps into the batter's box. And we're going to show you right now at Pac Bell, Barry hitting by the dock of the bay against the Reds. And this is fire. Hey, this is a look. Fire. It's a fair fire. I mean, this is silly. Fire. This is the hardest ball that Barry's hit in probably a week or two at least, right? Ooh. Hadn't hit a home run in 16 days. He Still hasn't. He walked on the next pitch, so Bonds takes a walk in his first at bat. Reds and Giants scoreless at Pac Bell. And Jose Rijo, you know, this is, you're talking about pitching. This is an interesting story with Rijo coming back after five elbow surgery, and he comes in 2-0. Oh. 
got another update now from Pac Bell. We'll take you right back there. JT Snow. In a scoreless game with the runners on first and second and two out. And JT Snow comes up with a big hit right up the middle. David Bell comes in. Bonds goes to third. And the Giants quickly with a one nothing lead against Jose Rijo. And what should we expect the guys from Jose Rijo? Is this a fluke or do you think he's going to consistently be able to be effective for well, five seasons? I mean, he, he's getting by on Guile and a uh, little bit of a unusual delivery. I mean, if he's going to average 83 miles an hour, he can't afford to make any mistakes because every time you're in the middle of the plate when you're throwing 83, somebody's going to undress a fielder. You know, amazingly, the Reds, we thought, would have the worst rotation of baseball coming in. And going into tonight's game, they had a better starters ERA than the Braves and a lot of other teams. Yeah, you, Sue, you mentioned Riho making mistakes. He almost made one to Bonds on that foul ball. We'll keep you posted. Pack Bell. Baseball tonight, Steve Berthiam along the way, Tim Kirchin and Rob Jibble jo joining me now. Jose Riho is back with us in the Major League tonight looking to win three straight starts for the first time in eight years after five elbow surgeries. Reds and Giants at San Francisco. Bottom one, Jose Rio facing leadoff guy David Bell. And he, oh, he hits him. Is he throwing it, Bell, last Sunday? Oh, they kind of got into it. The Reds throw one over the head of Barry Bonds. And Giants retaliate. Felix Rodriguez plunks Sean Casey. And Casey's not happy, so both teams are warned to knock it off. And you can bet Jose Rio hit him on purpose just to tell him we're not putting up with this. They stopped it right away, which is what umpires are supposed to do in that spot. Barry Bonds hit that one on purpose, but it's foul, but it was so impressive we had to show it to you. Next pitch, Rio decides, you know, let's just put him on. Still first, two on two outs, JT Snow singles to center, Bell scores, and the hit by the pitch comes back to hurt the Reds. It's 1 nothing San Fran. Well, that's what Steve, if it'll keep them from walking Bonds if the guy behind him beats you. Protection in the lineup. We're going to talk about that with the Braves coming up. Still 1 0 in the fifth. Rio can't help himself. Grounds into the 6 4 3. And then Rio against Rich Aurelia, and that's gone as third. That in the bottom of the fifth made it 2 0. Rio 2 0, 1.89. He hasn't won three straight starts since July of 94 after five surgeries on Hill's elbow, but he gets up two earned and five and a third, and it's still 2 0 Giants at Pac Bell. Bonds 0 for 1. He has walked twice. JT Snow having a good night here. 2 for 3. Now we got an update on baseball tonight. We go back to Pac Bell, Shinjo. With the runners on first and second and one out. Giants with a 2 0 lead. Safe at first. He beats it out. Bob Boone, your thoughts. And he's going to work himself into a tizzy here. And there you go. So Bob Boone has been ejected in the sixth inning. His Reds trailing the Giants two to nothing so far. Kirk Reeders won his last three starts. He's eight and one lifetime against the Reds. He's given up only five hits through six so far, working on the shutout. We're talking earlier about protecting Barry Bonds in the lineup. Well, in the seventh inning against the Reds, Bonds walked for the third time. Jeff Kent came up after Bonds, and that's protection, Tim. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, Jeff Kent's now just getting it going. He only had about a 10 at-bats in spring training, and nobody can hit with only 10 at-bats in spring training, and he's starting to get it going a little bit better. Now. Well, as long as he's... Evil Knievel. Yeah, stays away from riding his motorcycle through car washes or whatever he was doing. 6 nothing right now in the bottom of the seventh. They are hitting... Amazing story, that is, Jose Rijo. We'll show you how he handled his first ever start at Pac Bell. Giants and Reds at Pac Bell. Barry Bonds 0 for 1. He's walked three times. Jeff Kent just hit a home run. His fifth of the year. Richard really is also a homer for the Giants, and they lead Cincinnati 6 0 at Pac Bell. Reds have gotten off to very good starts in the last two years 16 9 this year in April, 14 10 last year in April. But once May hit last year, they took a nosedive. They won only six of their 28 games in May. The franchise record is 22 losses in that month, dropping out of uh, contention and into fifth in the division. This year, one and one in May so far. It's still early and still in first. First time they've been in first by themselves since June 5th of the year 2000. And Rob Dibble, at the beginning of the year, when we looked at the Reds' rotation, you looked at the names on the list, you think, well, you know, these guys aren't going to do anything. They don't exactly scare you, but it's worked out pretty well in Cincinnati. Well, and sometimes, Steve, you know, you give some of these guys a second chance, and the Red Sox in Boston have made a living in the last few years of, of you know, recycling pitchers, giving them some confidence, using, you know, some good pitching coach, and Don Gullett is one of the best in the major leagues there with Bob Boone, and Bob Boone being a former catcher. And you see guys like Elmer Descends 
getting, you know, the, the start opening day this year, getting the confidence. You know, look at some of these pitches. That breaking ball right there is unhittable. These guys are pitching with a lot of confidence. Then you see Chris Reedsma. This changeup, if I had half of this changeup, I'd still be playing in the major leagues. That's three changeups right there to the Dodgers. Unhittable stuff. Jimmy Haynes, a lot of people have given up on him, said he didn't have enough good stuff to stay in the major leagues. But once again, you throw a guy out there, you give him a few runs and give him some run support, he gets some confidence. He's able to throw great breaking balls and things around the plate. And right there, you see him against the Pirates throwing great stuff. Joey Hamilton has had tons of arm problems over the years. But what it does is it makes you pitch. And now he can go out there, he can throw unhittable breaking ball. And even though some of these guys don't have overpowering Randy Johnson or Kurt Schilling stuff, they know how to pitch. They know how to handle the strike zone, throw things that are all over the strike zone. And that's the kind of stuff that gets out is throwing strikes, making the guys put balls in play. And the Reds have really good defense. And so when you have a little bit of defense behind you, you get some runs support it's going to equal with a great bullpen a lot of a lot on Rio has time healed that wound and in the run Reds and Giants Jose Rio on the hill flashback to Sunday when Rio was in synergy Barry Bonds nearly got clonked in the head and you'll recall Bonds always had trouble with Rio in the past 216 11 K's and 37 career at bats and Felix Rodriguez hit the mayor and he got all testy first inning uh, Rio with a little greeting for David Bell puts his head down trots to first both teams warns to cut this stuff out. Rio now to Bonds and Barry Bonds. Mentioned he never hit Rio much and doesn't then. Puts it in the drink, but it was just foul. Next pitch, Rio decides that discretion is the better part of valor. Barry walked three times on the night. David Bell would score on JT Snow single. Bottom of the seventh, 3 0 count, and Rio wants nothing to do with him, and he didn't want much to do with Jeff Kent either. That is over the falls at Caesars. Three run shot, catch fifth. The Giants take it six to one. Kirk Reeder gets the win. He's now nine and one lifetime against Cincinnati. He's won four straight starts by giving up just four earned in 27 and one third innings pitch. Giants have now won four out of five bonds. Those three walks I mentioned, he was 0 for one. He's now homeless in his last 12 games. Center in game, Brian Kenny here. Reds and Brewers, the division leading Reds, that is. And Juan Encarnacion is ninth homer of the year. He's 11th in slugging in the National League. And Jose Rijo is on the hill, Chris Berman. One other note on the Reds that Brian mentioned. It. How about Jose Rio? Is yeah. that a nice trade? That's, no, that's, that's what the game is all about. That's. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of stories that, you know, go back, make you think of the natural and people like that. We were out of the game for a while, came back. And Jeff Jenkins of the Brewers off to a rough start this season, only slugging over 408. That's his fourth homer of the year, a three-run shot of Jose Rio. It's a sorry season for Jerry Royster and the Brewers thus far. Milwaukee was swept by the Cardinals on April 9th to the 11th. And the Brewers were swept by the Pirates April 15th to the 17th. Hey, they were swept by Montreal April 23rd to the 25th. And what do you know? The Brewers were swept by the Mets April 26th to 28th. The Reds were attempting to become the fifth team this season to sweep Milwaukee. Could they? Bottom five, Cincy down 5-2. Austin Kearns, they should call him Austin Powers. That off a of Nick Nugabauer. Ooh. And it hits the construction for the new ballpark. Three-run homer to tie the game at five. Good thing he wore that hard hat. Reds up 9-5. Reggie Taylor gets Brian Millett. Taylor takes him deep. His first career homer. The Reds are up now 11 to 5. Next batter for Millette is Mr. Kearns. Kearns. Uh oh. Just misses his head. Kearns still has a black eye from a beaning a week ago. Brewers catcher Paul Backo had a hold back Kearns. The Brewers clear the bench. Millette is a 27 year old rookie. And then both benches would clear. Jim Brower pitching now. His pitch two inside for Richie Sexton. Brower, unsure what's what's your problem, Richie? What's your problem? Sexton pointing his bat at Brower. These two guys actually were friends when they both played in Cleveland. Friendship sure over. That? Friendship over, Rich. Okay. Meanwhile, Sexton flying out. The umpires escort Richie to the dugout, and Sexton says, "Oh, enough of you Bulls fans." <laughs> Cincinnati wins 14 to 5. After the fiasco, a lot and lots of talk. Said Adam Dunn about Millett. Look, I know you have to throw inside. You got to do that in this league to be successful. But if you're that bad, go home. Retire. 
Millette insisted his pitch slipped, said he wasn't throwing at him. The ball just got the missed ball tonight. Barry Larkin's birthday present to Mr. Rijo. This triple, a couple of other hits, and you'll see what Jose presented to himself. Reds and the Brewers did some battle tonight as well. I don't know if he was there or not. Jose Rio on his 37th birthday. Okay. Jose Cabrera starts for Nick Nugabauer. He's got shoulder tenderness. Brewers have been beaten up bad. Casey, the base hit up the middle. Larkin's in. Red's got a lead of one zip early. Rio, trouble. Base is loaded. Two down, and that's a veteran. Oh, he, he pitches, Peter. Peter, who's he reminding you of? Well, you know, it could be Ramon Martinez. It could be, um, it just... At the end, you know, even Tom Seaver knowing what to do back in in uh, 85. Alex Sanchez uh, played himself into a couple of tough spots here. This first one ended up with Larkin on third, and then two batters later with the Reds up two zip. One out, one on for Sean Casey. And look what he does. I should say just one out. There was nobody on before that. Sanchez didn't get there. Take a look at the replay, HR. What's he doing? Not getting back to the ball. That's that, right. That's a tougher play than the Larkin play. The Larkin ball, he drifted on a little bit more. But that ball is going to find you when you're scuffling. A.K. Austin Kearns. Boy, five home runs and 69 at bats. And then Rio gets Hammonds. 4-6-3 DP. And the Reds go on to win it by a score of five zip. Jose Rio is three and one. He said he gave himself the best birthday present possible. Austin Kearns is batting 391, Peter. I mean, we knew all about Adam Dunn and his power, but is this a surprise at all, a huge product? You know, two years ago when they were playing in Dayton, it was Austin Kearns who was the guy who was the number one prospect. In fact, Adam Dunn said that they remember the Dayton ballpark as the place that Austin Kearns built. So, really, they live together. Great L friends. Larkin, three hits, a three-run score. The Brewers shut out a day after roughing up John Lieber and the Cubs. Remember, they scored 13 less than 24 ago. Winning on your birthday, the oldest starters to do so since 61. And the great Warren Spahn did it at the age of 40. Doyle Alexander, Frank Tanana, Jose Rijo on that list. How important is Jose Rijo going to be to this team? And will the Reds actually hang around? Is he going to be a, a factor? Or is he just sort of a guy now with the veteran leadership with all these young guys we talked about? was just sort of a stabilizer. Well, he's given him a tremendous shot in the arm. And no matter what happens to him the rest of the season, he's been part of the transition to keep them in first place for the while. I mean, I look at this team and I say, well, why can't they stay sure. in it? It's not a great division. The Astros, the Cardinals, and the Cubs have not played as well as anticipated. And you look at the Reds lineup with Dunn and Kearns now and Boone and Casey in the infield and Junior Griffey coming back. They have two very good catchers. You know, what maybe close to the best bullpen in the National League. What they wonder about is going to be the starting pitching. Now, they can do some things with this with this starting pitching. They know that the Sens is going to be there. They know Reacham is going to be there. They expect Joey Hamilton back, but they have a lot of things they can do. What's important about the Reds, if they take in Car Encarnacion, if they take one of the catchers, those are two guys who don't very, make very much money. J Jim Bowden had lunch with, with Jeff Shaw on M Monday. There's a good chance he's going to come back. That might allow him to trade a low-cost reliever. You take low-cost guys, Harold, you can get something. It's not like trying to trade a $6 million player because you're not going to get anything back. Okay. Back you know, I, you got to give the Reds some credit, too, for developing players. You know, I think back to the, the Griffey trade. We always talk about Seattle got Cameron and Tomko and what's happened. The Reds gave up Cameron and Tomko, and they've still been able to develop young players that come on beyond that. You don't give up that kind of talent unless you know that you're developing more that's coming along the way. This is a very strong ball club, very strong foundation they have already built there. They've got some solid clubs, players, young players that you can pass on. And like Peter said, you can move young talent because it doesn't cost you a lot to move it. Right. They just are not necessarily the team to take on a lot of salary. Williamson's been great. You add a shot of that bullpen, Peter. That's Jose Rijo, and he delivers, building their first place lead back up to five games as he helps pound the Cardinals today. Let's go to St. Louis. The Reds strike in the second. Juan Encarnacion ends his one for 17 slump, connects off Matt Morris, two run homer to left field, his 10th this season. Reds up two to nothing. Now Todd Walker with the slice to the left. That scores Sean Casey. Walker three for four today with two RBI singles. The Cards score two runs in the fifth. Tino Martinez with a solo homer. That comes off starter Jose Rijo and Rijo winds up with his fourth win, allows two runs, three strikeouts, no walks in five innings. Now, should Corky Miller be the everyday catcher? Well, check out his presence behind the plate as he snuffs out the suicide squeeze. Great.
great play that by Corky. You were out of there, pal. Reds then pull away from the cards in the sixth with five straight hits. Walker with the base hit to right. That makes it four to two. Then Corky with the liner to center field. Encarnacion motoring around the bags as he beats a throw to the plate. That's now five to two, and Brady Clark delivers two more. Reds go on to beat the Cardinals today. Your final score is 7-3. to three. Hey, got to give the Reds a lot of credit. Going after pitching and still talking with closer Jeff Shaw. No deal is imminent. Money seems to be the difference. The ball is in Shaw's court, but at least they're still talking. Junior continues to rehab from his knee injury, but we are told tonight it's doubtful he'll be ready for the brief three-game home series against the Marlins beginning Tuesday. More than likely, Griffey will return to the lineup at Atlanta. That'll be later next week. Also, Steve, for the Reds, in fact, Jose Rio said he knew the Reds' chances today were very limited because they were facing Matt Morris, who had won nine straight games at Bush Stadium. But Juan Encarnacion changed the odds when he hit a hanging curveball out of the park in the second inning. And then Jose Rio kept the Reds in front with five solid innings of work, and he got his fourth win of the season. When the Reds added four more runs in the sixth inning, and the Reds go on to beat the Cardinals 7-3. to three. Marlins getaway day in Cincinnati. Jose Rio on the mound for the Reds and gets himself in a little trouble. Well, he does. The Reds are going for the sweep here, and Jose's really trying to put everything he's got into it. His velocity's down a little bit after this surgery, so he's really trying to put some extra, and by doing that, he's falling off to the first base side and really not locating very well. And when you don't, when you don't locate, even a guy like Louis Castillo, who has no career home runs, can take you deep. Louis, Louis Castillo begged Rio to let him get a hit. They're, they're good friends from the Dominican Republic. Well, he got one. He got one. First left-handed hit for Homer of his career. That goes back to any level of baseball. Meanwhile, bottom five, Marlins up 5-1. Now it's Juan Encarnacion deep to left center. Eric Owens can't make it happen. Todd Walker scores. Reds down 5-2. Watch it one more time. And really like what Encarnacion brings. Well, he's a, he has really been a, a great addition to this Reds ball club, playing center field with Without Griffey out there, he's done a great job. Second double of the day for him. Meanwhile, Tavares pulled after the fifth. It's not that he was unhappy about that. He was unhappy with the umpires and got himself ejected after getting pulled. Top eighth, Marlins leading 6-4. Carlos Almanzar not really in the vicinity, and Corky Miller couldn't come up with it. Derek Lee comes in to score. Marlins win it 8-4. Second straight three-hit day for Castillo, who has an 11-game hit streak. Rijo's second loss since joining the rotation. His ERA as a starter now up to 4-8. You, you, you do something, but I have no problem with him. He's pitched very well. I feel like I lost the game myself. It was like, uh, it wasn't a team effort today. It was my own, my own effort. I think I uh, just lost the game myself. When Rio left, the Reds rallied bottom five. Look how close one Encarnacion comes to sending this out of the park. It hits off that padded wall. Todd Walker flying home from first. Cuts that deficit to 5-2. One out later, Adam Dunn. He had a three for four day, and one of those three hits drives in a run. 12 hits in all for the Reds, and Todd Walker had another productive day of work. He followed up his two-homer Wednesday night with a three for five day yesterday. This hit in the sixth. It cuts that Marlins lead to 5-4, but the bullpen simply could not hold on in the final. Florida eight, Reds four. They continue tonight. Joe skips his uh, his turn this time, but that's because you have an off day. Nothing really changes. Is there anything major that's going to change in the rotation outside of, and, and let's talk about the Joey Hamilton start as well, but first on Rio. Well, obviously we're always trying to get better, and, and Jose has not had a good start in the last two or three starts. He's shown fatigue. Uh, he's dropped his stuff around the fourth, fifth inning, and that's something that we're going to have to rebuild and get it back. His shoulder was a little bit sore after the last start, so we're going to skip this turn for him possibly start up next Saturday, but competition is competition, but hopefully we'll get Jose Rio built back up. Who's the first in that competition? Well, I think there's a lot of guys that we have in our bullpen. We have some guys at AAA as well. Uh, Jose Silverstone extremely well so far in his rehab. Lance Davis is, is pitching better. Bohannon's been off and on down there. Uh, but we're continuing to look inside as well as outside to try to improve the rotation. Okay, well, if you look inside the bullpen, are you talking about a Scott Williamson possibly as a star? No, we've got guys like Louis Pineda. We've got Jim Brower, I think, are the first two guys in our present bullpen that we would look at at starting. Let's go at the Fox Network Center. Are you waiting for Cincinnati to falter? So are the Braves. And that's exactly the way the Reds like it. It's Fox Saturday Baseball from Synergy Field. Thanks very much, Dean Zalasko. 
On a humid afternoon in Cincinnati, Fox Sports welcomes you to Synergy Field for the second of a three game weekend series between two first place clubs. The Atlanta Braves with a half game lead on the Mets in the National League East. And the surprising Cincinnati Reds lead the St. Louis Cardinals by two in the Central. A nice matchup here with the Braves and Reds. Jose Rijo and Tom Glavin start off in the second. Here's Jose Rio against Andrew Jones, swinging the active bat, slugging over 500. A lightning drive home run, 13th of the year, 2 0 Braves. Top of the third, man on two outs. Gary Sheffield said he had to shorten the stride a little bit, lengthen the home run. Two run shot, Braves take a 4 1 lead. Top of the fifth, Sheffield with two men on. Oh, that's a tough pitch. He just stroked it. Went out and got it. New construction site. 7 1 Braves. Look at this, Mike. Yeah, shortened his stride, all right, but how, about how, how short is this swing? Let's take a look at these two pitches. First one is up out over the plate, still goes to hooking, and the second one, a slider a little bit further down, but it's the extension and finish that gives him the power. Now here, Keith Lockhart trying to make things better for Tom Glavin. Oh, beautiful play. Lockhart, long way to go. He's looking for web gems of June. Oh, yes. And they say use two hands. That's not what they mean. That's a good point. The seventh with a man on. Glavin. Oh, you know, I don't know if he meant to let that go, but whatever works, and it's all working for Tom Glavin. Seven innings, one earned run. He is now nine and two with an ERA of 1.57. Braves take the first two and go for the sweep on Sunday. First matchup between Jose Rijo and Tom Glavin since June 18th, 1989. George Bush was also president then, the other one. <laughs> Junior taking on one of his old rivals from the AL West, the Oakland A's. And of course, last time they met, Griffey wasn't a red. It was 1990 World Series. You remember Jose Canseco? It was an amazing World Series. I was certain the A's would win that World Series easily, and they ended up getting swept, and our pal Rob Dibble was one reason why. Larkin's still on the same team. The only guy along with Jose Rio, but Rio's on the DL. Yeah, it's too bad Rio couldn't pitch in this series. Friday, back to reality. Reds up 1-0. Miguel Tejada. It's Jimmy Haynes. Jacked. Tied at one, 15th of the year. Now in the bottom fourth, still one all game. Juan Encarnacion on third. Reggie Taylor lifts one to left. David Justice can't handle it. Encarnacion trots home, two one Reds. Top six, two men on for John Mabry. John Mabry's played for a lot of teams. He hasn't done a lot of this. Right. And this ball is smoked. This gets, uh, this makes it two to two. It was an interesting deal he for Jeremy Giambi. Giambi's much younger, of course, and they traded Giambi mostly because of his defensive problems that he can hit, and John Mayberry's hit very well since he's come over to this club. Off Scott Sullivan, two-run shot. A's go up 5-2 to two and win it 5-3. to three. Aaron Harang gets the win. Oakland has won five straight, 13 of 14, 17 of 20. Mabry, two for four, three RBI, had just six RBI at 18 games for the season coming into this one and Oakland they love this interleague play stuff now 12 and 1 against the National League Griffey by the way one for four hitting 217 in the 18 games since his return from the disabled one. talking about how excited you were to get so much pitching back and now you're in serious shape um, you have problems Silva's up you don't know what you're going to do with him down low the guys that you thought were going to work out haven't worked out in Lance Davis and, and some of the other names that you've got down, Ty Howington's really not ready. Are you worried about the pitching situation? Well, you never get enough pitching, and that's how you win pennants with pitching. Uh, but we're very pleased with John Reedling and Jose Silva. Both of them come up and pitched extremely well the last two or three days. That's been a big plus. Scott Williamson is making huge strides. Uh, he's pitched back-to-back -back days now. Very impressive in Texas. Uh, the three pitches to Rodriguez, the slider, the fastball, the splitter, sit on the bench. Thank you very much. So this is a team where the bullpen continues to get stronger. We have Louis Pineda at AAA. Uh, yesterday, I'm sure you heard, uh, you know, six innings, one hit, no runs, six punch outs, one walk. Great performance by him. So the most important thing right now, uh, Silver's pitching well. We've got a lot of solid guys. You've got Almanzar and Rijo, who both will come back sometime in the next two to three weeks. So, you know, we are... We you do think have Rijo's back in two to three weeks? Has a chance to be. And, and maybe a lot longer than that. It depends on how the progress goes. But the most important thing with Jose, he hasn't pitched in six years. He won four games for us. Very impressive. We want to make sure that shoulder's built up so he can help us down the stretch.
It's been the location of more than 2,500 games, the site of too many memories to count, and the home of three World Series championships. Before moving into the new Great American Ballpark next year, Cincinnati fans say goodbye to Synergy Field. Today, the Reds meet the Phillies in the last game ever in this ballpark. You'll see it live here on Fox Sports Net. Well, when this ballpark opened back in 1970, it was considered state of the art at the time, a multi-purpose stadium with AstroTurf. As we know, that won't be remembered fondly, but the things that took place in this stadium will be. One of the things that's so special about this ball game is the guy that will take the mound for the Reds. Yeah, it's Jose Rijo. Very symbolic that Jose Rijo is the final pitcher in the final game at Synergy Field. Of course, the fans remember the vintage Jose Rijo. When you think of Jose Rijo, you think of the 1990 season. He was the 1990 World Series MVP in 1991. Dan, he dominated the early 90s. He led in winning percentage in 1991, led in strikeouts in 1993, and unfortunately in 1995, he had that Tommy John surgery. He's worked so hard to get back, and he told us it is an honor to be starting today's game. The sight is, is I don't think it's worth to describe, you know, how great feeling, how beautiful it feels today to be able to do this here today, uh, be able to say goodbye to my fans, to my city, the people that I love, that see me, they grow, they see me have all the great memory of the great year. Oh, my God. Well, it's nice to hear that this truly means something to Jose Rijo. Let's hope he's able to pitch five innings today. That would be one challenge for him to get to and perhaps be eligible for a win if the Reds are able to knock off the Phillies. A lot of memories, a lot of moments. The last one here at Synergy will not be a W. It'll be a 4-3 victory for the Phillies. Jose Rijo, four and two-thirds innings, eight hits, and three earned runs allowed. And the Reds sit and await their curtain call. We'll be back. We'll have that for you when we return. More coming up after this. Advance Auto Parts play of the game. It is the curtain call by the Reds of 2002 saying goodbye to Synergy Riverfront. Waving to the fans here. Emotional moment, Chris. Our Advance Auto Parts play of the game. Well, it's an emotional moment where the outcome of the game really didn't matter at all. It was a good ball game played well by both ball teams. But more than that, Georgia was a great time over the 30 plus years that this stadium provided Reds fans, baseball fans, people who wanted to get away from their ordinary lives and come out and watch Major League Baseball. This was the place that, uh, that was to do it, and uh, great memories and just great connections here. There's still a whole lot more to come. Jim Bowden, Jose Rio embracing by the field. Danny Graves and the Reds will all stand by. We're ready for a post game that should be memorable, so stay with us. We'll talk to you in the post game. In eight seasons from 1988 to 1995, this next pitcher won 92 games with a 6-17 winning percentage. He was a 1990 World Series Most Valuable Player. He ranks among the club's all-time pitching leaders in almost every category. And in the last two seasons, has made one of the greatest comebacks in baseball history. Ladies and gentlemen, Jose Rijo. Everyone remembers Tom Browning's perfect game in 1988. But earlier that season, our next guest nearly pulled off the same feat. He retired 26 consecutive Montreal Expos. And we're gonna take a minute to share some of those moments with some of those who have given us special memories. Let's begin with number 27, who gave us one today, Jose Rio. Jose, think back, your greatest memory here. Um, I don't know what, which one to brought up, but I think they are always special, they're always great to me. Uh, I enjoy my whole career in Cincinnati. Uh, right now, I do not want to say which one is my best moment. I kind of feel a little sad today because I haven't seen 
the best player to play the game in this stadium, P. Rose. Thank you. Jose Rio. Let's go to the waterfront. Catherine was with me at Synergy Field, and she's going to talk a little bit about what went on in the last few hours. Catherine? Well, Doc may have set that 220 record, but I'll tell you what, we, I, I bet we were going about 80 coming down this way. Well, it was an amazing day over there at Synergy Field, a grand finale to a grand 32-year history of that stadium. But beyond the remembrances and the ceremonies, to be quite honest with you, the Reds really just wanted to win one game in the series. Let's take a look at the highlights from a little bit earlier in the day. They were swept in yesterday's day-night doubleheader. Today, Sparky Anderson threw out the first pitch to Johnny Bench, but Jose Rijo got the start. He got into some trouble, though, early. First two batters reach base, but he strikes out Travis Lee to end the inning. Gave a little fist pump, too. In the fourth, Aaron Boone ties the game at 2-all, and Adam Dunn scores on this RBI hit. Now, that score held up until the next inning. When Travis Lee, oh, he got one back for that early strikeout by Rijo. His hit right here in the fifth scores Bobby Abreu and gave the Phillies the 3-2 lead. Now at that point, Bob Boone decided enough was enough. He pulled Jose and the sold out crowd down at Synergy Field gave him a standing ovation. Jose lasted four and two thirds and gave up eight hits with three earned runs. That has to be one of the best moments of the day. But says he also says that that may be his favorite start ever. Aaron Boone tried to get the guys going a little bit later. He hit his 25th home run of the year and you know he had a great season but it wasn't enough. The Phils sweep the Braves with a 4-3 win, and in the postgame ceremony, center field's home plate was dug up and taken via bullpen car, or Zamboni, I guess they call it, to the new Great American Ballpark. The next time it'll be used, opening day next year. Let's see if uh, the guys down in Atlanta have a little better better luck today. Denny, 